Now, your local forecast, accurate and dependable from the Weather Channel. Now, your local forecast, accurate and dependable from the Weather Channel. This time in Missouri, these are where storms are strongest. We still have some fairly potent thunderstorms across Wisconsin. They're heading south east at about 30 miles per hour. They seem to be heading right towards Chicago, but they're kind of dying out before they get there. So you might have a pretty quiet night in Chicago. We'll watch for thunderstorms coming in there a little bit later. All right, here through Missouri, right around Columbia, we have uh, reports of possible tornadoes. And also with the cell in Ray and Clay County, a confirmed tornado on the ground here. Radar indicator with these cells. The counties that do have tornado warnings, Boone, Cooper, Howard, and Monito. And these uh, tornado warnings are in effect until 11 o'clock. That means there's a possible tornado out there, and if you're in those counties, you should take cover immediately. That would be until 11. The thunderstorms at that time should be out of your area. We'll wait to see if anything is reissued. All righty, down to the south again. Thunderstorms here are quieting down. It's looking a little bit better. In Florida, we had special marine advisories out earlier. Those thunderstorms have moved out around Melbourne and Vero Beach. A little rain still in the area, but it looks like uh, things are really quieting down pretty nicely. And around Atlanta, Hardly any rain left at this point, but we had a big cluster of storms come in from the west. Carroll County, trees reported down around Roswell, Georgia, north of Atlanta, ports of some hail earlier, and also up towards Lake Lanier, we had some severe thunderstorms. Columbus now seeing a pretty strong thunderstorm cell, and we have a little bit of rain around Tuscaloosa and southwestern parts of Alabama and Clark County. We do have a severe thunderstorm warning. You probably get a grand jury organ. Things to look like low pressure working its way a little bit farther to the east so things will quiet down for you in Missouri but Indiana and Ohio Kentucky you should be prepared for some strong thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon and they may work their way as far south as Alabama and Mississippi again with the Northwest also getting a few showers from the next storm coming ashore all right let's check our longer range forecast our look ahead is sponsored by true value hardware help is just around the corner so it's Monday, just around the corner. Things don't change much through Monday. We see 70s, which is actually a little bit below normal for Cleveland. And then it looks like Chicago will be in the low 80s, which is normal for this time of year. 80s down to around Atlanta, we hope for you here. 90s to 100s, look at this, 110 to 120 in the southwest. No break from this June heat wave. July tends to be a little bit cooler if we see a little bit more moisture coming in and afternoon thunder showers, but none of that expected this week. So very dry and very hot. The stormy weather will definitely be here in the east. We have one front that catches up to you, Boston to D.C., and down to about Savannah and Georgia, chance of thunderstorms. But the strongest cells will be here in the Midwest. Minneapolis, Des Moines, possibly Chicago, late in the day on Monday, threat of severe weather. That storm system works to the east coast, and look how slowly it moves out. It'll be here through Wednesday, even Thursday, a chance of isolated thunderstorms from Maine as far south as Florida. High temperatures have built up over the southwest, while heat and humidity remain in the southeast. How long will the summer heat continue? Stay tuned to the Now, your local forecast, accurate and dependable from the Weather Channel. Well, good morning and thanks for tuning into the Weather Channel. I'm Kim Perez alongside of Dave Schwartz this hour. And you folks in Florida have definitely had your share of rainfall this summer, but the poor folks in the Northeast, they have ha had hardly had a drop of rain to speak of. And the thunderstorms that rumbled through Boston earlier today produced, well, about a tenth of an inch of rain, not very much. Now that's about all the rain the, the city has seen this month. Now for the year, they're about 11 and a half inches in the hole. And for the next few days, Bostonians will just have to enjoy the clear skies and mild temperatures and no rain. Well, meanwhile, the folks in Oregon got experience in, with condensation in a different form, fog. Now, fog reduced visibility to about a quarter. Temperatures were quite a bit warmer, highs in the mid to upper 80s. Now, the forecast is we're supposed to look at some more fog and through the evening hours around Astoria and uh, could reduce visibility to a quarter mile or so and even some fog in the forecast for the Ohio Valley down in through Georgia where a lot of residual moisture after the the thunderstorms early today and on the front so if you're heading out this morning take a look at the forecast and see if uh, fog could be a hindrance to your drive now as far as 
departures from normal, especially in the Pacific Northwest where we had fog uh, was a big problem yesterday morning. Temperatures were definitely not a problem. We had record highs, at least tying the record around Oregon, and uh, that was 92. Meanwhile, most of the Pacific Northwest, most mainly the West anyway, was way above normal. Now down here across Texas, things were a little bit below normal, and that's because of Hurricane Ismael. A lot of the moisture from a lot of the cloud cover from that moved into Texas, and we had a lot of rain today, and uh, just kept things really kind of crummy down in that area. Now, here's Portland. Let's take a look at some of the statistics here. The, the high for Thursday was 92, and the forecast a little bit cooler for tomorrow, about 89. Now, the average September high is 77. So, again, they are um, pretty much above normal for this time of the year, and I'm sure they're not, I'm sure they are not. Um, at least um, sad about that fact. Okay, now the forecast again, 89, but partly cloudy skies for Portland on Friday. And uh, the ridge will continue across the northwest, and that's what's keeping things pretty toasty in that area. The jet stream, though, across the northern plains, a different story, will bring a lot of those cold fronts that bring the cold air, at least the cooler air, with it down across this area. And that's where we're seeing the frost advisories for northern Wisconsin, a large part of Michigan here. Meanwhile, the southwest has contend with Hurricane Ismael. What will happen to Ismael? Well, the forecast is to bring it into New Mexico. Maybe not as a tropical storm, but the remnants of it and a lot of the moisture from it will move into New Mexico and Arizona, bring lots of heavy rainfall and possibly flooding conditions here. So we need to Really be careful if you're heading, uh, driving down across the roads in New Mexico and Texas over the next several days. Cool air, though, the rule for the northern plains not looking too bad. And unfortunately, the drought continues for the northeast. And there's the high pressure that will bring the dry air. The front went through. We had some showers. We did have some severe weather um, in New York and in Massachusetts and uh, Stockbridge had some severe weather uh, last night as the thunderstorms moved through, but the front now is well offshore and again by the morning hours won't even have to worry about it. A lot of that moisture in the morning hours will bring the rains in um, through New Mexico and Texas and by the afternoon again just getting inundated with rain. We can't emphasize enough how much rainfall they could be getting. Probably five to six inches possible in the mountains. So again, we're in a serious situation here with a lot of that tropical moisture moving into that area. Now across Florida, well, with the front kind of uh, down in this area here and ahead of it some impulses, we could see some more thunderstorm activity for tomorrow. Now behind the front, look at the temperatures in the 30s and 40s for Friday morning, and that's why we're seeing those frost advisories up for the Great Lakes area. Now, in the 60s and 70s in this area, and that's because of all the moisture and the cloud cover. It will keep things pretty warm in this area and kind of sultry. And again, down in the southwest in the 80s, which is kind of normal for this time of the year. One more time of 80s, I'd say one more day of 80s before the next front gets through. And we won't see 80s for a long time after that. And as you can see here, 70s already starting to uh, lurk in the ways there and uh, the 50s and by Tuesday check this out looks pretty cold there now so thunderstorms will continue across the east and looks like maybe Sunday Monday chance of showers and thunderstorms for the northwest Pacific Outlook coming up next and uh, we'll talk about some of the record highs come back and join us yes it's coming to me just a moment hello happy psychic helpers Dollars. Some, some interesting features here. Well, we don't see much here in the interior sections, and we'll take a look at this high temperatures. Things got really warm in this area here, but along the coast, now we had fog, we had low clouds. As you can see, we still have low clouds along the coastal areas, a story all the way down to southern Oregon along the coastal areas. Temperatures a little bit mild today with low clouds again and some fog that, you know, lifted and had low clouds from... That's way above normal for this time of the year. Their normal is about 77, so we're looking for temperatures a little bit cooler tomorrow, about 89. And uh, for Central California, though, very warm in the mid-90s for the interior sections. And again, for the south, look at this, still in the 100s in the deserts, looking pretty good. Next, we have European weather with Dave Schwartz. Presenting a better way to see and a free you can see. Uncover the secrets of weather. Experience a force for hurricane. Chase a tornado. Find out how weather research is being conducted today. Exposures. Travel with the Weather Channel as we relive some of the most intriguing weather phenomenon in history. Watch Exposures every Saturday and Sunday, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, only on the Weather Channel.
Well, it's time for the tropical update in this very busy tropical season. We've already had 13 named storms. We're down to Maryland now, which is our seventh hurricane. And next is Noel. I wonder if it'll be in time for Christmas. After that, Opal. And uh, it's possible we could see uh, all the way down to the R's. And uh, things are still kind of active off the... Um, off the coast of Africa. Now let's take a look at the, there we go, Maryland. And uh, right now Maryland is just west of Guadalupe and uh, the track takes it to the northwest. Now the winds are 85 miles per hour that has gone up and the pressure has dropped to 978 millibars and has dropped a lot in the last several hours, seven millibars in the last around four hours or so. And again, it's moving to the northwest at 13 miles per hour. And if you're keeping track of this, it's at 16.5 north and 62.8 west. And again, that's the 2 a.m. update. And we'll have a 5 o'clock update Eastern time. So make sure you come back and join us. and We'll give you the particulars at about 5 a.m. Okay, next we'll take a look at the winds and right now the tropical storm winds extend about 100 115 miles out and the hurricane winds a little they're expanding a little bit more over the last day or so and uh, the storm is moving a little bit further away from the islands and that's helping to let it get a little bit more organized we're seeing the pressure drop and we're seeing um, a more defined well it's hard to see an eye but they ha did find an eye when they sent a recon flight out there so again the forecast is the, the track should take Hurricane Maryland up close to the U.S. Virgin Islands and the British Virgin Islands and maybe just skirt Puerto Rico and uh, maybe hit directly St. Thomas and these islands could be right in the direct path of Hurricane Maryland. And again, it, it is forecast to maybe intensify slightly, but again, um, the hurricane force winds, which are good, are in a very compact little area and uh, maybe it moves fast enough, the damage won't be as um, as devastating. Here's the hurricane warnings from Guadalupe all the way up to St. Martin again, the whole island of Puerto Rico and St. Thomas and the U.S. Virgin Islands and the British Virgin Islands. Now let's take a close up look at this. Now this is a IR shot and here's the, you can't see an eye, but you can bet it's somewhere in where the higher cloud tops are. And you can see it's getting more organized now that it's moving a little bit further west and north of the islands where there's some mountains in that area that could that have kept it from probably getting as organized as it could earlier today. So the forecast takes it just in the northwest direction. And uh, again, those that are in the path should be taking precautions now. And out further east now, this is where a lot of these storms come from. And these storms are pretty far to the south for this time of the year. Again, we'll start to see things drift to the south when they come off Africa when we get towards the end of hurricane season but again um, south of the Cape Verde Islands and these tropical not these tropical disturbances anyway they're not very organized we're not expecting them to develop anytime soon but again we have to watch them once they get further away and closer to the, to the Caribbean or, or closer to the warmer waters now further west in the Caribbean, again, a tropical disturbance here moved across the central parts of Amer Central America and some thunderstorms in that area here. Now the, it looks like um, pretty decent development in that area and uh, they're not looking for anything in the next several hours. But now let's go further west, Hurricane Ismael, 11 o'clock update here. It's um, north of Los Mochis and again, it's moving to the, to the north. Um, it's about 80 miles an hour right now, and the forecast takes it up. In Scope of coverage you won't find anywhere else. This is Weather Scope This Morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. You're just in time for this morning's weather, and we'll start that we start rearranging our closets. Start time to bring out those sweaters and jackets because temperatures will be turning cooler across a good part of the country, especially so up across the north. We'll watch the polar jet stream kind of sagging southward, and with that, well, there will be some cooler air making its arrival across the upper Midwest and across the Great Lakes. And you really start to feel the cooling effects by Monday. 50s up around Minneapolis, cool readings too for the western lakes, some 60s sliding in towards Chicago, and still rather cool and fall-like too across the northeastern corner of the country.
From Boston to New York City, temperatures upper 60s and lower 70s. For the weekend, it will be kind of wet and damp up around the Great Lakes. A chance for some scattered showers and storms as some disturbances get caught up in that jet stream and they slide off towards the east. Maybe a widely scattered shower or thunderstorm across the southeast, but your best chance of seeing some rain will be across the southwest. All that tropical moisture from Hurricane Ishmael may bring some locally heavy rains and the rain start to slide off towards the east. Stick around, we'll exchange, uh, extend that forecast coming up. Look what Daddy can juggle with his Nokia cellular phone, a rubber duck, and a teddy bear. A Nokia cellular phone, a rubber duck, and a teddy bear. And with my Nokia cellular phone. Look at the next five days. We'll begin, though, with the current temperature regime across the lower 48. We wake up to 40s and 50s over the northern tier. State. Here's the current weather map, and I'll tell you what, it doesn't get much better than this. A big sprawling dome of high pressure remains anchored around the Great Lakes and the Northeast. And complements of that high pressure cell will be seeing wall to wall sunshine today. Green Bay, Chicago, Detroit. More delightful weather, too, for Boston and for New York City. No problems throughout most of the West, but across the Southwest, an entirely different story. All that moisture from now tropical storm Ishmael continues to feed in across the Southwest. We'll be seeing some locally heavy rains today and certainly the possibility for some flash flooding. Up towards the north though, disturbance could bring some nasty thunderstorms around Minnesota, especially around the Twin Cities. Watch out for some threatening skies. And temperature wise, well actually not too bad for most of the country. 50s, 60s, even a few 70s as we head farther towards the south. A complete look at this morning's weather coming up next. <laughs> Hurricane Marilyn, the fourth hurricane to hit the Caribbean this season, ripped through Barbados, Dominica, and Martinique yesterday with up to 80 mile per hour winds. Meanwhile, in the lower 48, Hurricane Ishmael contributes to the rain event in West Texas and parts of Arizona. We'll have details on this and the forecast for your part of the country coming up next on Weatherscope this morning, Friday, September 15th. The scope of coverage you won't find anywhere else. This is Weather Scope This Morning. Hey, good morning. It's Friday on this uh, September the 15th. 15th. That's what it is. <laughs> this is Vivian Brown, and good I'm morning. Cheryl Lemke. And we are certainly earning our paychecks today. All sorts of stuff to talk about. There's some cooler weather coming in across the Northeast, even a chance for some scattered hard frost by tonight. And elsewhere, the tropics remain very active. I'll tell you, we were dealing with Hurricane Luis last mm -hmm. month, and this month it is Hurricane Marilyn. Let's give you the very latest from the National Hurricane Center. As of 8 o'clock this morning, so you're into the very latest that we've received now from the National Hurricane Center. It centers this hurricane at 17 degrees north, 63.6 degrees west. That makes it about 95 miles east to southeast of the island of St. Croix. Winds of 90 miles an hour associated with Maryland. This Friday, I, Friday. I don't want to be the bad guy anymore. <laughs> DreamWorks newest hero. On this. Well, Ishmael may be causing major headaches across the southwest, but around Florida we have problems of a different sort, and that is with the red tide. An algae bloom known as the red tide has killed literally thousands of fish along Florida's Gulf Coastal beaches. The area currently being affected is um, extends from Southern Lee County northward over towards Sarasota and Manatee County. The dead fish are being washed on shore and creating a horrible smell for residents. And up in the northeast, we've had some beneficial rains over the last couple of days. Uh, we had some rain yesterday for Boston. Only a tenth of an inch of rain, but still that was enough to help them out just a little bit. The rainfall deficit, though, is still pretty bad around the Boston metro area. You're still about 11 and a half inches down for the year. Now, indeed, we've had some beneficial rains, as I was mentioning, throughout the northeastern corridor of the country, typically a tenth to a half, maybe even close to an inch of rain for some locales in the last 24 hours, ending as of 8 o'clock yesterday morning. There was also a lot of rain, too, that fell to the southeast. Two to four inches of rain very common across the Tennessee Valley and the Deep South, but even heavier rains fell across Texas. A lot of this again in response to Hurricane Ishmael or now Tropical Storm Ishmael and all this deep tropical 
moisture flowing in. We've had as much as six inches of rain for portions of western Texas. Here's a national radar picture this morning, and the rain continues nonstop down here around the southern plain states. But in the northeast, where we could stand to see some rainfall, unfortunately, a very dry scenario. We are looking at some showers and storms, though, flaring up along coastal waters of north and south Carolina. So kind of a rough morning for boating or fishing. Showers and storms lined up, but just off the coast of Wilmington and Cape Fear, and more rains draped southward over towards around Savannah. A big batch of moisture, too, flaring up across the upper Midwest. Showers with some embedded thunderstorms. They're rumbling across the Dakotas and now taking aim on west central Minnesota. There's been some showers and storms around Alexandria and around Fergus Falls. And we do think that in time, some of those showers and storms will start to pick up around Minneapolis and St. Paul. So keep that in mind. Certainly don't leave the house this morning without a raincoat or an umbrella. Farther towards the south, all that tropical moisture flowing in. We've had some steady rains plaguing most of eastern New Mexico around Roosevelt, Lee, and Eddy counties. Some steady heavy rains. Uh, right now it's raining at a pretty good clip around Clovis, New Mexico, and some moderate downpours for Lubbock, Texas. Be especially careful along Interstate 29. Likewise, I-40 extending back towards Oklahoma. It is going to be a rough go this morning as you head off to work or school. Here's the current weather map, and although it's very soggy across the southern plain states, we have some beautiful weather elsewhere around the country. High pressure dominates most of the west, keeping it pretty quiet from Seattle southward over towards San Diego. And just a delightful day dawning across the northeast. Now granted, we are seeing patchy, dense fog around the lower lakes and around the Ohio Valley, but the fog should be burning off later on this morning and eventually giving way to wall-to-wall -wall sunshine from Detroit northward over towards Boston. Temperature-wise, actually not looking too bad. Maybe just a light jacket or a sweater around Minneapolis and Chicago with temperatures in the 50s. Elsewhere, kind of balmy right along the Gulf Coast. It's 74 degrees this morning for New Orleans and a balmy 79 degrees for Tampa. Let's check out the forecast. We'll see how warm it's going to get for later on this afternoon. And here's the weather map. We really see high pressure dominating most of the weather across the northeast and across the west, keeping the weather very quiet. But down across the south, a day for the rain gear with more heavy, steady rains likely for Texas and New Mexico. Lots of sunshine, though, across the northeast, so break out the sunglasses. From Pittsburgh and Philadelphia northward towards down east Maine, what more could you ask for? And temperatures very comfortable, too. Lots of 60s and 70s, so again, just a light jacket is about all that you'll need. By tonight, though, we're calling for some very cool temperatures throughout the northeast, maybe even a hard frost setting up for sections of the northeast come later on tonight. Across the southeast, well, just about any place will be fair game to see a few hit or miss showers and storms. We think the greatest concentration, though, will be around Savannah and Charleston and running southward over towards Miami and Homestead, Florida. And then even heavier rains, though, soaking western Texas, so watch out for some localized flooding. As far as temperatures are concerned, they're pretty warm across the south. Still lots of 80s and 90s, but with the extensive cloud cover here across western Texas, that will help to hold back temperatures, so highs at best only in the 70s. Across the Midwest, showers and storms flaring up today. Watch out for some especially potent ones right around Minneapolis come later this afternoon. And again, temperatures, well, actually kind of mild throughout the Plain States. Out towards the west, more fair skies too, running from Seattle down towards San Francisco. But again, one of our worst spots today will be across the southwest. Heavy Heavy, heavy soaking rains there. Flash flood watches have been posted for parts of New Mexico and for West Texas. Well, we do have a taste of fall in the air, especially over New England mm -hmm. tonight with temperatures dropping into the 20s and 30s. We'll have more on that coming up next. Garden Tools, quality tools for every season. And a good Friday morning to you, and thanks for tuning into the Weather Channel as we check out your tropical update. Now, right now, we are right in the midst of the heart of the hurricane season, and we certainly have a lot of things going on out there. First of all, Hurricane Marilyn. Right now, it's packing winds of 90 miles per hour and lifting off towards the northwest. The central pressure has dropped somewhat compared to what it was earlier this morning. The central pressure has now dropped by some three millibars, and by that, that usually is a strong sign that the hurricane is strengthening, and indeed, the wind 
winds have increased somewhat from what it was earlier this morning, so now the winds are up to 90 miles per hour. Again, it's churning a path throughout the eastern Caribbean. Now, at least the hurricane force winds are very compact right around the eye of the hurricane. The hurricane force winds extend out some 30 miles from the eye of the hurricane, and the tropical storm force winds extend out some 90 miles. And right now, we have been seeing some squally conditions, some strong winds across the northern islands around St. Thomas and St. Croix. There have been some strong winds gusting from 35 up to 40 miles per hour, so certainly some very blustery conditions throughout this region. Now, the hurricane is forecast to possibly strengthen somewhat as we go through the next 24 hours. Also, it will more than likely continue on its northwestern track, and at that rate, the highest strike probability would take it somewhere across the Virgin Islands or quite possibly could clip the eastern coast of Puerto Rico. So this is our highest strike probability, at least at this particular point. At this point, hurricane warnings continue throughout the northern islands and extending westbound over through Puerto Rico. And that means hurricane force winds could be felt quite possibly within the next 24 hours or so. Also, you'll be seeing some very rough seas and choppy waters throughout this area. Small craft advisories have been posted. Also, we have heavy surf advisories and coastal flood watches, too, that have been posted. It may not be uncommon to see five to eight inches of rain in the path of this tropical system. And that is very common with tropical systems. They usually do drop some tremendous amounts of rain. So far around Martinique, we have had reports of over four inches of rain, so some heavy soaking rains in association with Hurricane Maryland. Here's our latest satellite picture of the hurricane. It's a very compact, very organized, a very well organized hurricane at this particular point. Some good outflow, a lot of deep convection in association with it. And again, it continues to churn off towards the north and the west. On a broader perspective, we see the hurricane again swirling in place around the Caribbean, but just north of that, we have the remnants of tropical depression number 14. Right now, it's a low pressure area parked here across the Atlantic, and we think that that tropical depression, or at least uh, the remnants of that tropical depression could have a major impact on Maryland because it may help to steer Maryland off in a northerly fashion. At least that's what our present thinking is right now. Elsewhere across the Atlantic, we have another tropical wave approaching the northern coast of South America, and yet again another tropical wave that's now just to the west of the Cape Verde Islands. On closer inspection, though, we have some very quiet conditions throughout the northern Gulf, but across the southern Gulf and across the Bay of Campeche, a lot of showers and thunderstorms. Here we have a tropical wave that's been gliding off towards the west, really increasing the thunderstorm activity down here across the Bay of Campeche and across the Yucatan Channel, and more thunderstorms too rolling off the uh, west central coast of Mexico. Now, one of our bigger concerns, too, as we head towards the East Pacific is what used to be Hurricane Ishmael. Now it's a tropical storm Ishmael as it's coming inland, encountering a lot of friction, a lot of land area throughout this region. So the tropical system continues to weaken, and right now it's downgraded to a tropical storm status. It's still packing winds that are very strong, though, at 70 miles per hour. It's lifting off towards the north, and it's pumping a good deal of moisture in across the southwestern portions of the country. So we'll certainly have to watch out for some localized flooding as we go through time. Lastly, we head out towards the West Pacific, and we have a super typhoon out here, Super Typhoon Oscar. Believe it or not, it's packing winds over 150 miles per hour, and it could be clipping the southern coast of Japan as we go through the next 24 hours. Well, let's check out the forecast now closer to home, and this edition of your Weekend Outlook is sponsored by Midas, the Midas way, the way it should be. And across the north, you might be scrambling for a jacket or a sweater. We're certainly seeing signs of change taking place as some cooler air is rushing down from Canada. And with the polar jet now sagging southward, some cooler air is invading parts of the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and across the northeast. And you really start to feel the cooling effects by Monday. Temperatures falling into the 50s around the Twin Cities, on into Rhinelander, and around Sault Ste. Marie. Cool 60s sliding over towards Chicago, and still very cool and fall like too across the Northeast. Temperatures upper 60s and lower 70s around Boston and around New York City. And with that jet stream skirting right across the North, it will be driving in some weak disturbances, keeping it rather unsettled around the Great Lakes and around the Northeast. Meanwhile, a few hit or miss showers across the Southeast, but the best concentration of rains will be across the South. Southwest. All that moisture from Ishmael could bring some localized flooding, some heavy rains across the south. Stay tuned for more weather. Dear Midas, back in the 70s, I purchased the Midas muffler for my 51 Ford wagon. Next, make. Michelin and your participating Michelin dealers. 
Well, if you're going to be doing some traveling across the south central portions of the country, you might be doing a lot of slipping and sliding on the highways and byways. A good deal of moisture continues to surge northward up through Texas and across Oklahoma. Kind of a slow go today across the Will Rogers Turnpike, likewise I-40, also I-29 across the Texas Panhandle, being inundated by some heavy, heavy rains, so just really a slow go this morning. Back to our weather maps we go. Needless to say, with all this rain coming into play, the grounds are very moist and very saturated, and with some additional showers and thunderstorms cropping up throughout the course of the day, there is a very high potential for some localized flooding. Flash flood watches have been posted from Arizona through New Mexico and extending on into western fringes of Texas. So indeed, a lot of sloppy traveling down towards the south. Also, we watch an upper level disturbance coming in across the upper Midwest. Here too, a chance for some showers and storms, maybe some really potent ones around Minneapolis, St. Paul for later on. And the winds too, kind of feisty today throughout the upper Midwest. And last but not least, we have some locally dense fog throughout the Ohio Valley and the Appalachians. Current weather is coming up next. It's as far as Michelin science has ever gone. Colombian coffee. Top of the morning, everyone. It's straight up 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific time on Friday, the 15th of September. I'm Bruce Edwards here with Marnie Stanier. We've got some heavy rains over southern portions of Texas and New Mexico and Arizona. Uh, but of course, we're watching the tropics and the stuff in Texas caused by a tropical system. Uh, once Hurricane Ismail, now it is a tropical storm, but Maryland's also making news uh, in the Leeward Islands. That's right. You know, I just had a phone conversation with uh, the Minister of Tourism from the island of St. Kitts. Mm -hmm. and and that's very close to where the storm is located right now. Hurricane Marilyn, the fourth hurricane to hit the Caribbean this season, ripped through Barbados, Dominica, and Martinique yesterday with up to 80 mile per hour winds. Meanwhile, in the lower 48, Hurricane Ishmael contributes to the rain event in West Texas and parts of Arizona. We'll have details on this and the forecast for your part of the country coming up next on Weatherscope this morning, Friday, September 15th. Scope of coverage you won't find anywhere else. This is Weather Scope this morning, sponsored by 100% Colombian Coffee. And a good Friday morning to you, and thanks for tuning into the Weather Channel with Vivian Brown here, and I'm Cheryl Lemke. And we're right in the heart of the hurricane season, and boy, we have a lot of busy things to talk about throughout the tropics. We have Hurricane Ishmael affecting the southwest, and elsewhere, Hurricane Maryland causing some big problems across the Caribbean. I'll tell you, dealing with Luis uh, just a month ago, and now it's Maryland, and I'll tell you what, still some big problems over the northern parts of the Lesser Antilles. Let's take you into um, the uh, Maryland area. We'll actually We'll see what's going on with Merle and the very latest information we've received from the National Hurricane Center. It centers the storm in New Mexico and West Texas, where an additional five inches of rain possible. And Cheryl has more details on this. We'll tell you what, what a difference a day can make, especially for the Northeast, as we watch some welcome rain sweeping across the area yesterday. We Again today, we're going to be seeing uh, some fair skies throughout the area, so rainfall kind of sparse throughout the Northeast. But I'll tell you what, in the last 24 hours or so, we have had some impressive rainfall tallies. Take a look at this. Typically, a half an inch to an inch of rain fell over portions of the Northeast. Great news for the drought-stricken Northeast. Even the Southeast picked up some significant rains, too, yesterday. Typically, two to four inches worth pelting the Tennessee Valley and the Deep South. Heaviest rains, though, have been across the Southwest. A lot of this due to the moisture from Ishmael. We've been seeing some heavier rains, close to a half a foot of rain, in fact, for portions of southwestern Texas. Here's a national radar picture this morning where we could stand to see some rains across the northeast. Well, again, a very dry scenario being painted for today. But there have been some showers and thunderstorms clustered just off the Carolina coast. A rough morning for boating or fishing. A big batch of showers and storms from just off the coast of Wilmington and Cape Fear and running southward to just off the coast of St. Simons Island. We're seeing more showers though flowing up across the upper Midwest. Showers with some embedded thunderstorms rumbling around Aberdeen and around Watertown, South Dakota. And we're also seeing a lot of moisture again flowing into the southwest. Again, much of this in response to Hurricane Ishmael. As the moisture continues to feed across New Mexico and Texas, be careful if you're heading off to work or school this morning. I-29 across the Texas Panhandle, likewise I-40 right there in Oklahoma, will certainly be a slow go this morning.
Here's our current weather map and it features all that tropical moisture flowing in across the southwest. Meanwhile, beautiful conditions across the west and a gorgeous day too across the northeast thanks to that big dome of high pressure. Fair skies today for Boston and for New York City. We'll see how long that nice weather will last. We'll check out the forecast with Vivian. Okay, let's begin with the midday hour. High pressure. The weather pick area must be the northeastern corridor mm -hmm. with a lot of sunshine, but downright wet over the southwest. Mm -hmm. And a fall is rapidly approaching. The beginning of fall starts September 23rd and already starting to feel the signs of change and some coolish temperatures coming in across the northeast this afternoon. Top of the hour and time for our aviation segment. Certainly some rough conditions for the pilots today throughout the southwest. Extensive cloud cover, lots of showers with some embedded thunderstorms and a lot of soggy weather with low visibility stretching from New Mexico through Texas, likewise extending northward through Oklahoma. Meanwhile, as we head out across the west, generally some quiet conditions out here. Not a whole lot in the way of cloud cover, but um, down across the south, typically MVFR and IFR flying conditions, so you'll certainly need to allow yourself some extra time to get to your destination today. Winds aloft generally around 5,000 feet. Strongest winds located around the Great Lakes and across the northeast. Again, the winds pick up even further at around 10,000 feet. And finally, at the jet stream level, some very strong winds ripping right across the northern lakes here. The polar jet kind of sagging southward. We're seeing some strong winds throughout this belt. Typically, winds averaging about 80 miles per hour or higher. Stick around if you're making some long-range forecast plans. We'll check out the forecast for the next five days coming up in just a moment. Emily! Come on! 23 years from now, Emily will have become the first woman to win the Indianapolis 500. She will set a land speed record of 454.32 miles per hour at Bonneville. Emily! And she will have eaten 3,234 bowls of warm, nutritious, instant Quaker oatmeal, usually maple and brown sugar. Accepting the trophy at Le Mans, she will have this to say. Thanks, Mom. Quaker oatmeal. Oh, what those oats can do. Don't let the weather jeopardize you. For the nearest dealer, call 1-800-4-AUDI. Well, it's still a rather bleak situation across the Northeast. Now, we had some welcome rains the last couple of days, but unfortunately, the dry scenario pretty much continues, and we're still looking at a very dismal rainfall deficit, at least around the New York City metro area, pushing close to a foot below normal rainfall. Even worse, though, around South Weymouth and Worcester, Massachusetts. Boy, the rainfall deficit quite impressive at this particular point, so we could certainly stand to see more rain around this area, but no rain coming up, at least for today. As we zoom in closer, Closer, though, we have had some rains going on this morning across the upper Midwest. Generally, some rain showers with some embedded thunderstorms. They're still rumbling across north and south Dakota and now picking up for west central Minnesota. All these showers and thunderstorms generally gliding off towards the east. Finally, we head towards the southwest. Here, the rain's going to be quite copious today. A lot of moisture from Hurricane Ishmael is feeding in across the southwest, so watch out for some localized flooding. Your local weather's coming up shortly. For a scope of coverage you won't find anywhere else, watch WeatherScope, coming up after your local forecast, only at... hurricane to hit the Caribbean this season ripped through Barbados, Dominica, and Martinique yesterday with up to 80 mile per hour winds. Meanwhile, in the lower 48, Hurricane Ishmael contributes to the rain event in West Texas and parts of Arizona. We'll have details on this and the forecast for your part of the country coming up next on Weatherscope this morning, Friday, September 15th. For a scope of coverage you won't find anywhere else, this is Weatherscope this morning. A good Friday morning to you and thanks for tuning in to the Weather Channel with Vivian Brown here and I'm Cheryl Lemke. We have a very busy weather pattern today. We have some showers and storms breaking out across the country and a lot of the moisture across the southwest is in direct response to Hurricane Ishmael and you're going to be saying more about that in just a moment. I tell you what, we have a hurricane out across the Pacific. We have another one in the Atlantic approaching the northern uh, Caribbean, eastern Caribbean islands and I'll tell you what, after dealing with Luis, 
now we have to deal with Merlin. One thing Let's after see, another. <laughs> I know. Let's see what's going on. The very latest with Hurricane Merlin out across the Atlantic. The latest information. It can make, especially for the Northeast. As yesterday, we watched some welcome rain sweeping across the area. In Boston, residents were pulling out the umbrellas to deal with the rain and the wind. The storms, though, only dropped a tenth of the temperatures with highs near 65. Now, as far as rainfall is concerned, some of the rain, though, has been rather generous in the last 24 hours, actually ending yesterday morning. Some locales across the Northeast picked up a half an inch to an inch of rain, just what the doctor ordered. Again, though, the rainfall deficit is so bad that we still need a lot more rain to really totally alleviate the deficit, but every little bit seems to help. We even had more rains, too, across the Southeast, but the heaviest rains were right here in Texas. A lot of it, though, in response to Hurricane Ishmael, as we're seeing a lot of tropical moisture flowing in and some parts of Texas yesterday picked up close to a half a foot of rain. Now for today though again dry conditions across the northeast but there have been some showers and thunderstorms breaking out around the country. Some of these showers and storms poised just off the Carolina coast. So kind of a rough morning for boating or for fishing. A lot of showers and storms just off the coast of Cape Fear and more wet weather too just to the east of Charleston. Then we watch a big batch of rains flaring up across the upper Midwest. Showers with some embedded thunderstorms rolling through the Upper Plains states. And lastly, we head towards the southwest. All this tropical moisture again feeding inland. Steady rain so far for Eddy and Lee counties of eastern New Mexico. More rains too spreading in across the Texas Panhandle and the rain too surging in across Oklahoma. If you're heading off to work or school this morning, be really careful along Interstate 40 back here in Oklahoma. Likewise, I-29, I-10 and I-20 across Texas could also be a little bit on the wet side. Here's our current weather map this morning and we take you into the forecast for today and it shows this front kind of dangling across the southeast. Now that front will serve as the focal point for more showers and storms. I think the greatest concentration of showers and storms that will be across the southwest as this moisture continues to feed northward. A lot of rains encompassing New Mexico and Texas today, even spreading back towards Oklahoma, likewise Arizona and Louisiana and for some wet conditions too. But across the northeast, I think that's going to be our pick spot today. Plenty of sunshine, a big dome of high pressure parked across the area. So a beautiful day for Boston, New York City, Pittsburgh, and Philly, and temperatures not looking too bad. Even though we could use additional rain in the Northeast today, I'd say just another beautiful one. Can have lunch outside today. Stick around. Coming up shortly, we'll check out the weather in Europe. If your car isn't performing like it used to, put back the power with Slick 50 Fuel System Formula. Ten times more powerful than the leading fuel treatment, Slick 50 cleans the entire fuel system. You'll feel the difference guaranteed. Ask for Slick 50 Fuel System Formula. More power to you. Slick 50 Fuel System Formula can be found at the following fine retailers. David, wake up. 21 years from now, David will be 6'2 and weigh 210 pounds. He will lead the NFL in rushing with 2,272 yards. David! And he will have eaten 3,486 bowls of warm, nutritious, instant Quaker oatmeal. Mostly apples and cinnamon. When he is honored as player of the year, he'll make a short speech in which he'll say, Thanks, Mom. Quaker oatmeal. Oh, what those oats can do. Does your bra have a time now? Introducing 18-hour satin and lace with cushioned comfort straps. It's full support that's endlessly comfortable. 18-hour. For the conditions and temperatures across Europe, let Napa. And a good Friday morning to you, and thanks for tuning into the Weather Channel. As we find out that it's now about 13 minutes before the top of the hour, and time for your tropical update. And I'll tell you what, we have a very busy tropical season. We have all sorts of things to talk about, so let's get right into it. First of all, Hurricane Maryland. Right now, it's packing winds of 85 miles per hour, and it's roughly centered about 120 miles east southeast of St. Croix, and it's lifting off towards the northwest uh, rather quickly at about 13 miles per hour or so. Central pressure has now dropped. This is the lowest pressure that this hurricane has reached since it has become a hurricane. It's right now at 974 millibars, so it's a very deep tropical system out here churning across the Caribbean. Now, it's a very compact system, too, and the winds are really mainly felt right around the core of the hurricane. The hurricane force winds extend out some 30 miles from the eye of the hurricane, and the tropical storm force winds extend out some 90 miles. So it's a rather small, compact hurricane that's swirling out here across the Caribbean. Now, we do forecast 
forecast that there could be some slight intensification taking place as the day continues to wear on. Also, we think Hurricane Maryland will probably more or less continue on its northwesterly trek. And as it does, the greatest strike probability would take it somewhere across the Virgin Islands or maybe across eastern sections of Puerto Rico. And with that in mind, hurricane warnings continue at this time from just north of Guadalupe across the northern islands and extending westbound over through Puerto Rico. Hurricane warnings have been posted, meaning that there is that possibility of feeling hurricane force winds sometime within the next 24 hours. Here's our latest satellite picture of Hurricane Maryland as it continues to swirl in place. Again, it's really churning up the waters across the Caribbean, and we might be seeing seas ranging anywhere from 10 to 12 feet high. So certainly some rough conditions throughout the eastern Caribbean. We have some heavy surf advisories in effect, also some coastal flood watches too in effect for the Virgin Islands, as well as for portions of Puerto Rico. Now, it may not be uncommon to see some very heavy rains in association with this hurricane, maybe anywhere from five to eight inches of rain. And in fact, already we've seen some heavy rains with this hurricane. Uh, right around Martinique, we've had reports of over four inches of rain in the past 24 hours. Elsewhere, though, as we just head a little bit farther to the north of Maryland, we see the leftovers of Tropical Depression Number 14, a low pressure area that's swirling out here across the Atlantic. And we think that low could have a big influence on Maryland. Quite possibly, this might help to steer Maryland off in a northerly fashion, or at least that's what we're thinking right now. So that little upper level low could have an impact on Hurricane Maryland. Elsewhere, we have a couple more waves that have been rolling off the African shore, uh, shoreline. One's about halfway between Africa and South America. Another one just now kind of coming closer towards the northern coast of South America. As we zoom in a little bit closer, we have relatively fair skies and quiet conditions throughout the northern Gulf. But here's a tropical wave that's been coming in across the Yucatan Channel. Right now, some showers and thunderstorms flaring up around the Bay of Campeche, more thunderstorms along coastal waters of the Yucatan Peninsula. And a lot of storms, too, now coming off the coast, the west central coast here of Central America. So with this tropical wave, there could be some locally heavy down pours in association with it. As we head towards the East Pacific, more active weather to talk about. We have a couple more disturbances lined up across the intertropical convergence zone, but the biggest story here is Hurricane Ishmael. It's right now just making landfall across uh, parts of Mexico. It's right here around Baja, California. It's still packing winds of 75 miles per hour, although as it is encountering some land, it's going to be encountering a lot of friction with the land, and we do anticipate that Ishmael will st start to weaken as we go through time. So so probably by the next advisory, this could be downgraded to a tropical storm status, although right now it's still a hurricane and it's continuing to lift off generally towards the north. We still have some hurricane warnings too in effect around Baja, California and for the west central coast of Mexico. Now the biggest impact that Ishmael is going to have is that it's going to be feeding a lot of moisture in across the southwest. We'll be in for some heavy soaking rains, New Mexico, Texas, even across Arizona too. So some flash flood watches have been posted, so watch out for some localized flooding over the southwest. Finally, we head out towards the Pacific, and here, too, we have a big, monstrous tropical system. This is a super typhoon, super typhoon Oscar. It's lifting generally off towards the north, and it could be making some landfall around Japan a little bit later on. So this is a monstrous storm system that's really swirling and churning out here across the Pacific. Let's take you back down to our weather maps, and here's the forecast for today. Beautiful weather as we head stateside, some nice weather around Detroit and Cleveland. Beautiful weather, too, for Boston and for New York City as we have high-pressure building down from Canada and with the high pressure the air is sinking and as the air sinks that inhibits clouds from forming so we're talking about wall-to-wall -wall sunshine across the northeast nice conditions too farther towards the west but again with Ishmael swirling and pulling inland we're gonna be seeing some heavy soaking rains across the southwest so watch potentially what are you talking about it's, I don't, it's strange uh, well, I grew up uh, riding horses that look you nothing did? with one touch of one button. Emergency road services. Amazing. Report brought to you by Michelin and your participating Michelin dealers. We have scattered rain showers this morning. Sponsored by 100% Colombian Coffee. 
and a good Friday morning to you and thanks for tuning into the Weather Channel with Vivian Brown and I'm Cheryl Lemke. Another very busy weather pattern today as we're watching some showers and storms over spreading the southwest. Also a chance for some flooding today as we're watching the moisture from Hurricane Ishmael kind of working its way across the southwest. I'll tell you what, flood watches for West Texas, Southern New Mexico and the southeastern parts of Arizona. We'll keep you posted on Ishmael. Also, what's going on with Hurricane Maryland? You know, it's out across the Atlantic and we have for you the very latest advisory that we've received from the National Hurricane. Here's Cheryl. Well, Ishmael continues to cause some major headaches across the southwest, but it's down in Florida that we've had some problems with the red tide. We take you there now. An algae bloom known as the red tide has literally killed thousands of fish along Florida's Gulf Coastal beaches. The area currently affected by the red tide extends from southern Lee County northward over towards Sarasota and Manatee counties. Meanwhile, in the northeast, we finally saw some beneficial rains yesterday. Now, for Boston, though, just a tenth of an inch of rain, and so we're we're still talking about a rainfall deficit there for the year with nearly 11 and a half inches below normal. So it's still kind of bad across the Northeast. We could certainly stand to see some rainfall there. But luckily in the last day or so, there has been some welcome rains, uh, typically a tenth to a half, even close to an inch of rain for some spots around the Northeast. Even heavier rains though pelted the Southeast yesterday, especially throughout the Tennessee Valley. Some spots picked up two to four inches worth of rain and then even heavier rain swamping parts of Texas. Here we had some copious amounts of rain. Some locales have picked up five to six inches of rainfall in the last day or so. But for today, we still have the rains coming down for Oklahoma and Texas. In the northeast, though, unfortunately not a whole lot of wet weather to be found today. In the south, though, we've had some showers and thunder showers, mainly along coastal waters of North and South Carolina. If you're planning on going boating or fishing today, well, you might want to think twice about it because there has been a lot of wet weather here just off the coast from Wilmington and Cape Fear and running southward over towards Savannah. Elsewhere, though, a large batch of showers with some embedded thunderstorms rumbling across the upper Midwest. They're sliding off towards the east. We think that by later on today, maybe some powerful thunderstorms right around the Twin Cities. More sloppy weather, too, as we head southbound. Now, keep in mind that much of this is in response to what used to be Hurricane Ishmael. Now it's a tropical storm, and all this deep tropical moisture continues to feed in across the southwest. We've had some heavy, steady rains, especially around Lee County here in eastern New Mexico. Persistent rains there, at least three inches since yesterday, and now some serious flooding taking place throughout that region. Flood warnings continue. More moisture, too, surging in from the Texas Panhandle back towards Oklahoma. Be careful across the Will Rogers Turnpike. Likewise, I-40, kind of a slow go this morning. As we take you back to our weather maps today, we have some beautiful weather, though, elsewhere around the country. There is a little bit of fog, though, this morning for lower Michigan and down towards the central Appalachians, but the fog should be burning off very shortly and eventually giving way to wall-to-wall -wall sunshine. As we watch this big dome of high pressure building in across the northeast, that's going to provide all the sunshine. Relatively quiet weather too out across the west, but across the southwest, keep the rain gear close at hand today as all that moisture continues to feed in through Arizona, New Mexico, and across the Texas Panhandle. Now as far as